All right, howdy, Ags. Uh, my name is Michael. I will be presenting to you today on dangers of heat stress for build. This is going to come into play quite a bit in the hot temperatures of Texas. So according to our friends down under, heat stress is defined as when your body can no longer cool itself enough to maintain a healthy temperature of around 98 degrees Fahrenheit. This can be brought about by a variety of situations, including working in high temperature conditions, which will be what we're dealing with in the opening weeks of construction, working in poorly ventilated areas, such as inside the containers when we're putting up walls and floors inside, and finally working with too much clothing on, so coming to site unprepared for the temperature. In order to prepare for the temperature, student supervisors and command team members need to look at the weather before coming to site so that they can understand what the temperature is going to be doing in terms of fluctuations and in terms of the highest expected temperature. Uh, it's important to understand that when you're looking at temperature, that's not really what your body is experiencing. Your body is experiencing a heat index, which is an increase in the temperature based on a variety of factors. For our case though, let's keep things simple. If you're working in the sun outside at 15 degrees to the temperature that you see on your, on your weather, just to make sure that you're staying safe. And if you're planning on doing work inside the containers because it's poorly ventilated, add about 20 degrees to that so that you're erring on the side of caution. So next we'll talk about kind of various, what to do in various temperature ranges. Um, I'll start at the very end very briefly. Uh, above 115 degrees, we are not expecting temperatures that high very often. Um, it may be that hot inside the container. We're not expecting it to be that hot outside the container. If it was to happen, then we would probably postpone construction that day or cancel it outright because you know, working in those conditions is not safe. Um, but if like, you're inside the container and work needs to be done, just drink water frequently, watch each other for symptoms, and take breaks very, very often. So let's kind of go back and talk about the first three regions. The first region, uh, less than 91 degrees Fahrenheit, um, it's most important that you wear sunscreen and you take uh, breaks and drink water as you need. This will probably be closer towards the end of construction when we'll be dealing with much colder weather. Uh, so heat related illness isn't ex as much of a danger as it is in the next two regions, or sorry, the next three regions, but it's important to be alert for the symptoms anyway. The next two regions, the moderate and the high region, about 91 degrees to 115 degrees, is mostly going to be what we're concerned with, especially during the opening weeks of construction. So in these regions, uh, volunteers, student supervisors, and command team all need to be wearing sunscreen, drinking about four cups of water every hour, and taking regularly breaks. The higher the temperature, the more breaks you're going to want. So if you're in this high region of 103 to 115, take breaks every 15 to 20 minutes go somewhere cool in the shade, let your body cool down. Uh, and you're gonna wanna watch for the symptoms of heat related illnesses as they appear. We'll go over those next, but in these last three regions, heat related illness is an extreme danger and it's important that we be prepared to deal with it. So the first heat related illness we're gonna talk about is a heat rash. It's a cluster of red bumps on your skin, particularly where you're doing a lot of sweating. So things like your neck, your chest, the folds of your skin, like your arms and your legs. If you see these red bumps on someone or on yourself, take go to a cooler area like the prototype uh, container, take a break and keep the affected areas dry. Don't put water on it, don't try and cool it down. Just keep the areas dry, wait for the symptoms to alleviate. If they do, go back to work and if they don't, go ahead and go home. Next is a heat cramp. This is a muscle spasm and pain, usually in muscles that you'll be using a lot, such as your arms, when you're moving things around, or using power tools, your legs if you're having to climb or hold things up. So if you experience these cramps, uh, or a volunteer is experiencing these cramps, go rest in the prototype container, drink a lot of cold water, and try to wait for the pain to go away. If they do, go back to work, but do only lighter work until you're confident that you can work at a higher capacity. And if you're unsure, go ahead and just do lighter work for the remainder of your shift. If the symptoms don't alleviate after a little while, uh, go inside the GSC, try and get some medical attention, and a student supervisor or command team member should follow up and call them to make sure that they're okay. 
The next heat related illness we're going to talk about is heat exhaustion. This is probably going to be among the more common of the heat related illness just because the symptoms come about very easily and come about when you've, your body has reached too high of a temperature. So the symptoms of heat exhaustion include cool moist skin, heavy sweating, uh, various feelings of pain including headaches, nausea, dizziness, lightheadedness, uh, vomiting, and weak severe thirst. If you see or know of someone experiencing this, take them into the prototype right away, have them lie down, and give them lukewarm water slowly. Don't let them chug cold water as quickly as they can. Just have them drink water slowly. If the symptoms don't improve in an hour, call 911 and get them to come and help you uh, deal with someone in heat exhaustion. Tell them where you are um, and the symptoms that the pay the heat exhausted person is dealing with uh, and stay with them keep an eye on them again make sure that they're drinking water slowly and trying to stay calm in a cool environment the last heat related illness we're going to talk about is the most serious heat related illness it's called heat stroke it's basically heat exhaustion taken to the next level so it includes all of the symptoms of heat exhaustion plus new ones such as confusion fainting seizures, red hot and dry skin, and extremely high body temperature. If you see or suspect someone is going through a heat stroke, call 911 immediately, have them come to the site as quickly as they can, and take the heat stroke person into the prototype, loosen their outer clothing if it's appropriate, get all of the fans blowing air onto the worker, and have them drink lukewarm water very, very slowly if they're conscious. If not, um, just keep the cold air on them as much as you can and stay with them until uh, 911 arrives to provide help. So again, heat stroke and heat exhaustion are very similar. They share very uh, similar symptoms. In the event of either, it's going to be a safer bet to call 911 right away. So again, compare the symptoms, try and be as accurate as you can when describing what the workers going through but do not give the worker ice it is tempting to try and get them their body cooled down by using ice packs or cold compresses you don't want to do this this can cause the body to go into shock and cause more problems so in the event of either heat exhaustion or heat stroke take them somewhere cooler have them drink warmer water slowly but try and get them uh, calm and relaxed in a shaded cool area these are some links that I've found useful. The first link is a uh, Australian government article about heat stress and how they deal with it. The next two are from NIOSH, which is an American federal agency in charge of researching worker safety related uh, incidents and how to prevent them in the future. So educate yourself, know what you need to do in the event of any heat related illness, and know that the best prescription for heat stress and heat related illness is prevention. Taking breaks as you need them, drinking cold water as much as you can. Remember that safety is a choice you make and by making that choice for yourself and for others will make the build site much safer, will be much more efficient in construction, and people in the prototype will thank you for not having to fill out those medical forms. So thanks in Gigamags and let's get building.